In the second lesson on FMEA, I will explain the steps to perform FMEA with key activities at each step. Here we assume that FMEA team formation has been done based on the criteria that I explained in the first lesson on FMEA. What are the inputs and outputs of an FMEA? Well, the inputs of FMEA will come mainly from the FMEA teams through the findings of the root cause using cause and effects diagram and 5Y analysis tool. The input also come from the process map of the products or the history of the process from the previous FMEA documentation. And lastly, we can also obtain the inputs from procedures, knowledge of our team's members, and also the experiences that they have regarding the product. Amen. This input will be fit into FMEA process basically based on the FMEA form that I will explain soon. So what is the output? So the outputs will be the list of actions to prevent the causes of the failure and the actions to detect the failures that may be recurring. So from the list, once we find the causes of the problem, so we will issue basically a work order to the maintenance team or related teams to do the maintenance and correction action for the problem. The second output for FMEA, which are much important is the list of actions that has been taken for each of the failure modes. So this will be kept as a study data for future reference in computerized maintenance management system. In order to successfully perform an FMEA, we need to first clearly identify the elements involved in the product to be analyzed. We can use a structure tree as shown here to subdivide our product so that we can simplify the analysis and improve the effectiveness of our analysis. Let's say we have one product X here so we can subdivide the product into subsystem and the other layer of the subsystem and at each subsystem we can divide it into the elements that build the subsystem and for each elements of the subsystem will be given the specific function of the elements and then we identify the failure modes and the causes that related to that specific function. So this failure mode and causes is the input to the FMEA as I explained in the previous slide which come from the various uh, sources such as experience, procedures, or the root cause analysis tools such as 5Y and cause and effect diagram. As an example, let's assume that we are preparing FMEA for a car model. So we can divide the car into subsystems such as engine and chassis. Then following this uh, way of dividing this uh, product into subsystem then we will come to the let's say we choose engine 
and then the cooling system so under the cooling system we have a fan compressor and radiator and then we want to prepare FMEA for a fan of cooling system so what are the function of the fan so they are for airflow to cooling the radiator and uh, so on so forth so uh, the next is based on radiator cooling we will identify what are the failure modes that related to the radiator cooling so as shown here there are potential failure modes such as fan not starting or fan speed is very slow so based on cost on an effect diagram 5y analysis or experience from uh, the team members we will identify the cause of this failure mode so they are possible that uh, fan not start because the fault relay or it can be a bad fan motor or it can be a temperature switch problem so we will use this to fit into our FMEA form letter so this is how a standard FMEA forms looks like on top there are relevant information that needs to be completed such as product names FMEA team leader and person in charge of preparing this documentation and there are four parameter values that is defined the failure risk level called severity occurrence detections and RN. each of these parameter take the scales between 1 to 10 all right let's see how we can complete this FMEA form first we have to identify the process or the function related to the product that need to be analyzed second is to identify the potential failure modes the ways in which the inputs can go wrong so for each of the failure modes we have to determine what is the potential failure effects based on this failure mode and then we have to assign the severity ranking for each of the effects right so the severity will be between 1 to 10 and the next is to identify the potential causes or potential reasons why the product or the function fail and then we have to assign the occurrence level also between 1 to 10 then we have to list the current controls what are the existing actions has been taken in order to prevent or to detect the failure and similarly we have to assign the detection parameters also between 1 to 10 and the next is we have to calculate the RPN number so RPN stand for risk priority number based on these three parameters based on the potential causes the team need to come up with the recommendation on how to reduce the occurrence of the failure and then we have to assign the person in charge who should take the responsibility and perform the actions that has been recommended by the team so after the action has been performed or action has been taken 
we have to monitor the effect of the preventive actions. Then, after a predefined period, we have to recalculate the RPN number by assigning a new parameters to this severity occurrence and detections. Supposedly, the new risk priority number after the recommended action has been taken should show a significant improvement compared to the previous RPN. If there is no improvement or the level has not been reduced, the team have to revise the recommended actions and perform a new action in order to reduce the RPN number. As mentioned previously, the priority of action based on FMEA analysis is influenced by these three parameters, which is severity, occurrence, and detections. So the severity is the danger of the potential effect of the failure. So if you give a scale of one, it's not danger or it's not severe at all. And 10 is very severe. In some cases, 10 means a fatalities or death. Second parameter occurrence is the likelihood that the failure will occur. So one is not likely and 10 is very likely. And the last parameter detection is the likelihood that the problem will be detected. How easy we can detect the problem. So for scale one, it's very easy to detect. Scale 10 is not easy to detect. For example, uh, water leaking is very easy. We can see by visual inspection, but for gas leaking, for example, it's not easy because it will be leak and then normally people will smell the gas and cause the uh, injuries, then we can detect. All right, so these are the parameters and skills involved in uh, FMEA documentation. This is how we can calculate risk priority number, RPN. Severity times by occurrence times by detection. So in this example, RPN is equal to 7 times by 5 times by 4, which is 140. Alright, that's all for how we can actually perform failure mode and effect analysis to measure or to prioritize the action based on the failure modes of a certain product. Thank you.